Hi there, this is Sauban and you're watching the Genesis YouTube channel. Today, we'll discuss a problem that I have again dubbed a beginner's guide. Why this name? It is so because the solution to this problem encapsulates the various points that you must keep in mind while solving collision problems in rigid body mechanics. There will be other beginner guide problems that will appear in the channel. All these problems are there in the problem corner playlist as well as the beginner's guide playlist. Watch them closely as it gives you an insight into a large category of problems that you can solve. So, without further ado, we jump to the problem. A uniform spherical ball of radius R and mass M collides with a plank of mass capital M kept on a horizontal surface. Before impact, the center of the ball has a velocity V0 and a clockwise angular velocity as shown. After the impact, the velocity of the ball normal to the plank is reversed with the same magnitude and it stops rotating. The coefficient of friction between the ball and the plank is mu. Assume that the plank is large enough and neglect friction between the plank and the ground. Find part A, the angular velocity of the ball just before the impact. B, the velocities of the ball and the plank just after the impact. C, the impulse of the force acting between the ball and the plank. D, the impulse given to the plank by the ground. After the impact, consider the motion of the system between the first impact of the ball on the plank to the second one. Find part E, the time taken between two impacts. F, the maximum height that the ball's center rises above the plank. G, the distance on the plank between first two impacts of the ball and H, the distance travelled by the plank in this duration. I suggest that you take a pen and a notebook and work the problem as the solution progresses. Frequently during the solution, I will ask you to evaluate certain steps. At those points, stop the video and do the required calculations. This figure shows the situation just before the impact. For greater clarity, I have drawn the sphere quite a distance above the plank, but the meaning is it is about to collide. As you can see, the point of contact has a velocity v0 downward and omega0 r leftward. This implies that the point of contact of the ball slips relative to the point on the plank which it is about to hit. And in which direction? Along the common tangent, you can see that the velocity of the point of contact of the ball with the plank has a leftward velocity. So during the impact, the friction will act rightward and since slipping is actually occurring, the friction will be kinetic in nature. Now in any collision question, I would suggest that you draw the situation just before the impact, during the impact and just after the impact. As a beginner, this will give you useful insights into how to proceed into such problems. So I would request you to pause the video, try to analyze the situation just before the impact, during the impact and just after the impact. I hope you have done so. Now follow along. This figure shows the situation just before the impact. The angular velocity of the ball is assumed to be omega naught clockwise. This figure shows the situation during the impact. Now notice time of collision is not given. Hence, we can assume that the impact is almost instantaneous. In all such nearly instantaneous impacts, the impulses of the constant forces like mg can be neglected safely. So here, I have only shown the impulses which are significant in causing a change of momentum. J is the magnitude of the impulse due to the normal between the ball and the plank. J0 is the magnitude of impulse given to the plank by the ground. Now, why does the ground give an impulse? This is because if there was no ground due to the impulse J, the plank would have gone downwards, but this motion is arrested by the presence of ground. Now, we are very sure that the normal force between the sphere and the plank is going to be impulsive in nature and therefore, to counter that, the ground must give an impulse too. Going forward, as the friction between the ball and the plank is kinetic, the impulse due to the friction during the impact is mu j rightward on the ball and mu j leftward on the plank. 
Now, analyzing the during situation is going to give you insights as to how to select variables in the situation just after the impact. This shows the situation just after the impact. As given in the question, the component of velocity normal to the plank becomes V0 upwards. Now notice that from our analysis of the during time, we can say that due to the horizontal impulse mu j, the center of mass of the ball develops a linear momentum in that direction. There was no horizontal momentum in the center of mass of the ball initially. Hence, after the impact, the horizontal component of velocity of the center of the ball has been taken as u rightward. On the plank, the impulse mu j gives a leftward horizontal momentum. We have taken the velocity of the plank to be v leftward as shown. Notice that if you analyze it in three steps like this, you are able to select variables properly. Also, as was given in the question, just after the collision, the rotation of the ball stops. So no omega has been taken in the just after situation. Now look at the system, ball plus plank. There is no external impulse in the horizontal direction. J and mu j are internal impulses for the system. Hence, the linear momentum in the horizontal direction of the system, ball plus plank, is conserved. So what was the initial horizontal momentum? Ball had zero horizontal momentum because its velocity was downwards and the plank was stationary. So both of them were zero is equal to mu plus capital M into minus V. Now, if you apply linear impulse momentum theorem to the plank in the horizontal direction, taking rightwards positive, we get minus mu j, the horizontal impulse acting on the plank, is equal to final horizontal momentum capital M into minus of v minus zero because initial horizontal momentum was zero for the plank. If we apply the linear impulse momentum theorem in the vertical direction, we get upward impulse j naught plus downward impulse minus j is equal to change in momentum which is zero because in the vertical direction, the plank does not change its momentum, it remains zero. Now, if we apply linear impulse momentum theorem to the ball in the horizontal direction, we get mu j is equal to mu. Mu j is the horizontal impulse, final linear momentum in the horizontal direction of the ball is mu, initial was zero. And in the vertical direction, we get j is equal to final momentum mb0 minus initial momentum m into minus v0. I have taken upwards positive. Finally, applying angular momentum theorem about the center of the ball, we get mu jr anticlockwise is equal to final angular momentum about the center zero because it stops rotating minus 2 by 5 mr square omega naught clockwise. Now, collecting all these equations in one place, we have a set of six equations. Now, see, we have five unknown variables u, v, omega naught, j, and j naught, and six equations. If you notice carefully that the first momentum equation is not an independent equation, rather, the application of linear impulse momentum theorem in the horizontal direction for the sphere and the plank combined gives the same equation. Try to spot that. Pause the video if need be and notice that the equation mu j is equal to mu and mu j is equal to capital MV gives the momentum conservation equation. So in reality, we have only five independent equations and five variables. So the system is solvable. Now I leave the solution of these equations to you. Pause the video and work it out. I hope that you have done so. Now here are the answers. J0 and J are the same, which is 2 mv0. Omega0 is 5 mu v0 by r. U is 2 mu v0 and V is 2 mu mv0 by capital M. Now we have to analyze further after the collision. After the impact, the ball loses contact with the plank. And the center of the ball undergoes parabolic motion with initial velocities u rightward and v0 upward because the only force that will act after this on the ball is mg downwards. The plank in this time moves with a constant velocity v backwards. So the motion of the system that will ensue looks somewhat like this. Now from your study of projectiles, I trust you can very easily say that the time of flight is going to be 2 times vertical velocity by g. 
So the time of flight of the ball till the next impact is 2 v naught by g. And maximum height is the y velocity square by 2g. So capital H is v naught square by 2g. Now think carefully. Relative to the plank, the horizontal velocity of the center of the ball is going to be u plus v. And therefore the horizontal range of the ball relative to the plank is r equals u plus v into t. Pause the video, put the value of u in, put the value of v inside, put t and then you will get r as 4 mu v naught square by g times 1 plus small m by capital M. This is exactly the distance between the two impact points on the plank. I hope you notice that I am saying on the plank, I am not saying this is the range of the ball relative to earth. If you have studied projectiles, this should be very clear to you. In this time, the plank moves back by a distance d which is v into t because it moves in that duration with constant velocity. Substitute the value of v and t to get d is equal to 4 mu m v naught square by capital MG. This completes the solution. But here I want to discuss a few important things with you. Here are a few questions which I would like to pose onto you and I will be answering them in the second part of this video which will come out soon. First, is the collision between the sphere and the plank elastic? If so, is initial kinetic energy of the system equal to final kinetic energy of the system? Why did we not try to write angular momentum conservation? How do we understand which conservation principles are going to be applicable in a question and which are not going to be applicable? So keep thinking about these questions. I'll be taking these points up in great detail in the next video. In this question, I have primarily tried to outline the steps of the solution in great detail so that you become equipped to apply the impulse momentum equations clearly in more complex situations. Such beginner's guides will now periodically appear on the channel. You will find them in the playlist Beginner's Guides, so watch out for them. This video is also available in the playlist Conservation Laws in Rigid Body Systems. So if you have learned anything from this video, like, share and subscribe. And as always, stay safe and stay healthy all.